I enjoy my job much, much more now because I'm in a better place up here. Craig Beck helps you understand what alcohol does to you, how it works on your mind, how it works on your body. I, I won't go into that. You know, I highly recommend. I always recommend him to anybody that contacts me through Facebook or just in general chats to friends. I just always recommend him because it's worked for me. It won't work for everyone. And you've got to be in the right mindset to do that. You know, there's, there's, there's many methods out there, but I just, this, well, here I am three years on. So what more can I say? It's not only I can't have alcohol anymore. It's I don't want it anymore. I really don't want it. Three years and a bit ago, I couldn't have imagined life without alcohol. Now I'm looking back and I can't actually imagine my life the way it was. That is Mick uh, from the Stop Drinking Expert members area. Uh, what a superstar. Three years sober and um, bravely made that video. I say bravely because there is a huge amount of stigma around this drug, isn't there? It's a bit strange, isn't it? Alcohol is the only drug on planet Earth where when you get a problem with it, society blames you and not the drug. That doesn't happen with any other drug. Think about it. You tell someone that you're addicted to cigarettes, you're addicted to nicotine. They don't go, oh, you dirty, horrible smokeaholic. You'll always be a smokeaholic as long as you live. Even if you stop smoking, you'll still be a recovering smokeaholic. They don't lay all that blame and stigma on you, do they? They might not like smoking, but they don't associate it with you. They understand that cigarettes are highly addictive and they're narcissistic and run by an evil company. And they got you hooked. And if you stop smoking them, you will be a ex-smoker. Only with alcohol, when you tell someone, I've got a problem with drinking, watch their face. Watch the pity come over them. And when you give up alcohol and become sober, they won't even give you the credit to say you're an ex-drinker. They say, oh, you're a recovering alcoholic, are you? It's the weirdest drug on planet Earth. So I understand that people get a little bit nervous about proudly wearing their sobriety, as I call it. And certainly when I started doing this 12 years ago, nobody would make me a video testimonial. No, even people whose lives have been completely changed for the better would say to me, Craig, I'd love to, but I just can't. I just don't want to be associated with that part of my past. So I think times have changed. I think people are more willing these days to say, I'm proud of what I've done. Uh, and to do what Mick did, and I thank Mick for uh, sharing that video with me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share the entire video with you in just a moment. It's about 20 minutes long, um, but actually it's a really easy listen and a really easy watch because Mick tells you just kind of how bad his life got, um, what he tried to stop drinking, and what he's done with his life since he got sober. He'll tell you how much he was spending per week on alcohol and what he now does with that money. It's a really fascinating story. So I hope you watch it in full. It's coming up in just a moment. But listen, I just wanted to just mention one more thing. I think there is another reason why people don't share these sorts of videos and testimonials very often. It's not, it's not so much that they're embarrassed about their past. It's a fear of failure. It's a fear that if you proudly go out into the world and hold your hands up and say, I am sober, then you are saying to everyone, I'll always be sober. I'll never drink again because I'm being so brazen about it. And to a lot of people, that's scary. That puts pressure on them. They're thinking, but what if I do drink? Everyone's going to think I'm a failure. Everyone's going to laugh at me and so on and so on. So I get it. I get it. But I always encourage people to own their sobriety, to take it and take what you've learned and then go help other people. Because it's a win-win. Your public claiming of your sobriety and your working with other people to help them keeps you on the sober path. I know it's worked for me over the last 12 years, but also you're helping other people who are stuck in the cycle of this horrible drug 
that we also got stuck with. So what I would like to do now is share with you Mix full video. Here it is. Good morning. Really is a good morning today. Three years sober, eh? Can't believe it. Three years sober. Yeah, three years ago, I opened those curtains. It was a bit later in the day, obviously drinking the night before. So the sun was shining. It was one of those warm summer nights. So I had the windows open. Sun was glistening on the dew and it was just a oh, <laughs> moment. Um, I knew then that th that was it. Alcohol was was history in my life. You know, I, I knew I had a problem, obviously, uh, way before that time. You know, when you're looking forward to seven o'clock coming every evening to crack open the the wine, seven o'clock, wine o'clock, seven o'clock, my bar opening. Obviously, there's a problem. Did I do anything about it? Well, I tried various things. Adsis, one recovery. It just tapering back didn't didn't work. Yeah, you went through the motions. You tapered back a little bit, but just built back up. Eventually got to a stage where my girlfriend at the time she was in a bad way she had to go into into rehab um while she was in rehab i didn't know what to expect but ultimately she couldn't be with anyone that drunk um was that enough for me to quit alcohol no <laughs> you know i was devastated at the time but I still didn't give up, didn't give up for her. But ultimately, I think you've got to give up for yourself. You can't do it for someone else. It doesn't matter how worried your children are about your health. They think you're going to get ill. They think you're going to have a premature death. And that's what I've done. You know, trying various methods. It just didn't work for me. When my ex was in rehab, I decided to go to the AA for a meeting. Partially because I was worried about myself and I thought that might be the answer. Um, but also just to be a good boyfriend and understand the 12 steps that she was going through in um, where she was. It just wasn't for me. I won't go into the reasons why it wasn't for me. Other than ultimately, I think the book's got to stop with me, with us. Um, we've got to be the captains of our own ship. And it just wasn't for me. Wonderful people there at the meeting. But no. Um looking through YouTube and the internet and I came across this guy, Craig Beck, the stop drinking expert, started watching some of his videos and I just kind of connected with everything he was saying. Um, so I decided I was going to well, give it a go. It's maybe not the right attitude. Give it a go. I think you've got to, You've got to be more positive than that. Um, I did download his audiobook from Audible. I didn't really listen to it properly. Again, I don't think I was in the right mindset initially. I did try Stoptober and through brute force and ignorance, basically, I managed to quit, not quit, stop pause my drinking <laughs> for six weeks um day three was just hell i was crawling the walls with just withdrawal symptoms it was just it was horrible day four was bad and then it just slowly started getting better and better and by the end of the week two 
I was feeling all right, no withdrawal. By the end of week three, I was starting to just feel better in myself, sleep better. By the end of the week four, I was just, I just had so much energy. End of October, I thought, oh, I'll carry this on, carry this on for another week. And I did. And then I thought, carry this on for another week. And I did. And then I just had this amazing plan. I thought, right, I've got control of alcohol here. What I'll do is I'll only drink at weekends and I'll have every third or fourth month off and then back to drinking at weekends within, I say two weeks, it wasn't even two weeks. It was bang, I was back to two bottles of red wine a night. And I just knew then that there's only one way to control alcohol and that's just not to have it in my life anymore. Um, I got Christmas out of the way. I thought, I'll tell you what, I'll do dry January. Dry January lasted two, two days. Um, and then I just thought, right, I've really, I've really got, I've got to do this. I've got to stop drinking. I was really overweight. My health was suffering. My blood pressure was, you know, I was borderline hypertension. I can't remember the exact measurements. I just know when you compare it to the charts in the doctors, I was, I was up there. I was borderline hypertension, um, out of breath, fastening my shoelaces, for God's sake. <laughs> um, you know, I had a physical job, still have, um, would go to the gym then and I can't fasten my laces without being out of breath. Ridiculous. Um, so anyway, coming towards the end of January, I thought, right, I'm going to listen to Craig Beck, the stop drinking expert, his audio book, um, Alcohol Lied to Me. And I started listening and just, it's difficult to describe it. I just seemed to connect with everything he was saying. You know, he's a he's a British guy from the northeast of England. His drinking habits, everything he said, how it didn't affect him at work during the day. Evening would come and he'd crack open the wine and everything he did to try and stop before he came up with this method, it just connected with me and I started listening and listening and then I just thought that was it. I picked a day. I thought this is going to be my last drink of alcohol. And that was January the 28th. I had my last drink and then woke up the next day and that's been it. Three years today. Um, I treated myself just there there's an enormous box with a smart turbo trainer in it for my cycling you see i'm into cycling there's three of my oh seven eight bikes I don't know lose count because i keep rebuilding and <laughs> building them um so uh yeah that, that was a treat to myself um maybe you shouldn't celebrate the facts but i don't count the days weeks months i just know that was the date i gave up and i would have bought the thing anyway but i just wanted an excuse to treat myself um i've worked out how much money i would have spent on alcohol in the last three years it's around about the twelve thousand pound mark which is pretty ridiculous really and all that i had to show for that was a full recycling bin every two weeks um and some that doesn't that twelve thousand pound doesn't include the drunken eBay purchases. Um, you know, I've got a Triumph Daytona nine five five I. Don't ride it. Don't really like it that much. <laughs> that was a drunken purchase. Um, I'll sell that on. But I got into cycling, and 
more so building bikes. Um, I've got my carbon track bike there, my carbon road bike there, and my carbon time trial bike there, which I'm busy um, working on. That's a project. Um, downstairs, I've got three vintage steel bikes, uh, resto mods, vintage steel with with modern components, vintage track bike, and then I've got mountain bikes and, and stuff like that. Um, so why am I talking about bicycles? <laughs> Basically, time and money. I found I had so much more time on my hands. <sighs> Before seven o'clock would come, I'd crack open the wine and all the things I had planned would just go out the window. I'd just get drunk, crack open the second bottle of wine, get more drunk, watch crap on the television, crap on YouTube, fall asleep on the settee, wake up about three o'clock in the morning, neck like this, crawl up to bed, alarm would go off, crawl out of bed feeling rough in the morning, breathalyze myself. Surprisingly, I always seem to be fine. I bought an expensive breathalyzer to make sure I could drive to work, I say safely, but um, ridiculous, isn't it? But since giving up the plonk, the poison, I've got time on my hands to put into my passion. I've got not only the money I used to spend on alcohol, what's that, around about 400 pounds a month, a couple of bottles of wine a night, plus going out, plus, you know, anything else that I'd spend <laughs> while I was drunk, around about 400 pounds a month. And basically, not only that money, but just I've got more enthusiasm for work. I'm self-employed, so I make better choices with the jobs I choose. I enjoy my job much, much more now because I'm in a better place up here. Craig Beck helps you understand what alcohol does to you, how it works on your mind, how it works on your body. I, I won't go into that, you know, I highly recommend. I always recommend him to anybody that contacts me through Facebook or just in general chat to friends. I just always recommend him because it's worked for me. It won't work for everyone. And you've got to be in the right mindset to do that. You know, there's 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 many methods out there, but I just, this, well, here I am, three years on. So what more can I say? It's not only I can't have alcohol anymore. Alcohol? <laughs> I can't have alcohol anymore. It's I don't want it anymore. I really don't want it. Three years and a bit ago, I couldn't have imagined life without alcohol. Now I'm looking back and I can't actually imagine my life the way it was. It wasn't good. And it wouldn't have got better. You know, when... My ex went into rehab. That second bottle of wine, I didn't have that to share with anyone. So basically, it just crept up and up and up until I was two bottles of wine. Then I was looking at wine, which was stronger than the 13% of my bottles of Merlot. Looking at wines, I wouldn't really, I wouldn't really consider drinking. And you know, our, God bless our German supermarkets, the Aldi's and the Lidl, the cheap wine. I remember picking up a bottle of their red wine and it was 14.5%. Absolutely insane. I'll have two bottles of that, please. Where would I have been if I carried on? Well, that's six... I'm, who knows? I just know it would have got worse. 
Going back to when I did Stoptober, I'm almost glad I started drinking from not realising how crap I actually felt day to day. I thought crap was normal, so that was my normal. All the stages I went through, the withdrawal, the sleeping better, the bags of energy. And then when I started drinking again, that was the realization. This is how crap I feel. I had a back to back result. This is how crap I feel when I drink. Two weeks ago, I felt bloody amazing. So when it came to stop drinking for good, I knew day three was going to be really, really hard. I knew by day five, it was going to start to get better. I knew by the end of week two, those feelings of withdrawal would be gone. Week three, I'd be sleeping better. Week four, I'd start to feel amazing. So I had something <laughs> planned out. I knew how I was going to feel. And that made it easier for me, in my mind. And it's worked. Um, I think after about five months of, of not drinking, after I got over the euphoria, I was just like, yes, I've done it. Yeah, I've cracked this. Then certain things came to light and I started to feel a bit down as I knew there was stuff I had to deal with. And I did get help. The good old NHS had a brilliant counsellor. I talked through the things that I needed to resolve. I won't go into those, they're personal. And it really, really helped. Um, now I just put more effort into myself. I care for myself a lot more. I've sorted up there out. I put more effort into my exercise. Not, oh, I've got to get home for seven o'clock, you know. I get a quick 15 minute workout in, I've got to be home for seven. You know, I put time into myself building and riding my bikes. I've started up the velodrome, track training. I love that. What am I going to do the rest of the year? More of the same, maybe concentrate more on my health. Um, losing that last little bit of weight. Increase the speed on the bike. Increase my fitness. Uh, and just carry on the way I'm going. Carry on enjoying my work. Carry on living an alcohol-free life because it, it's just it's just so much better. And I can't believe how much of I've, my life I've just pissed up the wall. You know, how much of my life I've wasted. souls don't we when we've had a when we've had a drink you know the odd occasions where I think we've all been surrounded by friends that are drunk and we're not and you just think well they're a bunch of arseholes we're all a bunch of arseholes Add alcohol instant arsehole is the saying isn't it so what have I found hard I don't know, once the initial, I've done it, I know I'm an ex-drinker, I know in my mind, then dealing with, dealing with my demons, I think, oh, I stayed single for two years after giving up alcohol, I, I needed to sort myself out, um, a blast from the past, bah, blast from the past turned up and i knew her when i was a lot younger and i started dating her and she hardly drank but there was just mentions of alcohol oh that's a brilliant pub they do wonderful food or come to this function if you feel uncomfortable you know we, we can always go early but other 
it, it wasn't just that. There were other reasons that I didn't continue with that. But it just put alcohol in the forefront of my mind. And I don't want it there. I don't want constant reminders. I don't want to constantly be thinking, how am I going to act in this situation? So I ended that and, yeah, stayed single since then. <sighs> yeah, relationships, building relationships alcohol free. I think that's uh, that's the hard one, but I'm happy in what I do. I'm happy in myself at this moment in time. <sighs> Where I go from now, just more of the same. Keep going, keep concentrating on myself and the people around me that are important. Concentrate on my work, build my business up even more and just continue an alcohol-free life, an alcohol-free, happy life. It's amazing how many things that I used to worry about that just don't bother me anymore because they're not important. And I think when you're not thinking straight because of alcohol, certain things become exaggerated in your mind. You worry about things. If you're in a constant state of withdrawal, because yeah, as soon as you stop drinking, <laughs> your body's withdrawing from the alcohol. So you're more stressed. Or it comes out as stress. It's not stress. It's it's that it's that little sort of monster in the back of your mind saying, "It's been a while. You need topping up. You don't need topping up. You don't need topping up at all. You need that shit out of your life. I've got it out of my life, and it's just everything is so much better." You know, I've opened a card from my daughter this morning and read it in front of her, what she wrote, and I was just in tears. It's very personal, so I won't read it out and I'll probably cry again anyway. Very, very personal. How she feels now. And basically saying she's got a dad back. And that is just so important. I've got another card to open from my daughter who doesn't live with me. She's she's older. Um, I'm going to video call her and open that in front of her. I'll probably cry again. <laughs> They're proud of me. But most importantly, they've got their dad there 24 hours a day now. Whenever they need me, I can just get my car keys and be there instead of half the time I couldn't because I was drinking and over the limit. Be there all the time. My children, as everybody's children I can imagine, are the most important things in my life. And I can be there all the time for them. I don't think there's a lot more I can say. This is just, as you can tell, off the cuff. I just set the camera going and I'm talking. And I've probably missed a load of things out, but I'm just talking from, from my heart. Anyway, I'm going to say bye-bye for now. And uh, not more I can say. Goodbye. <laughs>